Hi, I'm John, and talking to a camera alone feels weird. I don't do that very much, but I'm going to try it. Uh, and I think it's going to be good because I'm excited to tell you about a project that I've been working on for a while. And I think that if I get used to this, to talking to a camera with no one behind it, uh, then I can start making some weekly update videos. And that would be very helpful for people to see what I'm working on and for me to see what I'm working on later on. So a little bit of background about what the project is. Um, I've been working on an open source ADS-B receiver for a while. If you don't know what ADS-B is, it's an, uh, a standardized protocol spoken by pretty much all the big planes, all the uh, general avi or sorry, all the civil aviation aircraft, all the airliners, and a good number of the general aviation aircraft too, little Cessnas and stuff. Um, it was implemented in the U.S. somewhere around the mid-2000s, and it's caught on um, in a lot of places, and it's, it's the global standard, honestly. Um, ADS-B has a bunch of data in the protocol. There's aircraft location, there's airspeed, there's call sign, there's meteorological information, like, you know, oh, there's turbulence here, or this is the humidity and the temperature of where I'm flying. Um, there's ADS-B receivers all over the world, you know, in uh, airport installations, uh, in aircraft themselves. Some of them are tens of thousands of dollars, like the ones that are built into the aircraft to let aircraft avoid other aircraft. Uh, some of the receivers are quite cheap. Um, a lot of the, there's even really small ADS-B receivers that get integrated into small UAVs and that kind of thing. Uh, those are generally in the order of a couple hundred dollars. Uh, there's, or, you know, sometimes up to a thousand, but it really depends. Uh, there's also been some open source projects that have got quite a lot of traction already around open, uh, ADS-B receivers. Uh, for instance, there's, you know, Dump 1090, TAR 1090, Read SB, uh, a bunch of these are kind of forks of each other, but they use a software-defined radio uh, kind of like this. Uh, it's an RTLS DRV3 and a Raspberry Pi. And they use that setup to decode ADSB using the software defined tuner um, in basically a kind of a debug mode and just use raw power uh, readings from that right into the Raspberry Pi. And then they can decode the buffer with some chunky external compute and get the data in the packets. And that data gets used for all kinds of things. Mostly these receivers are installed to feed online exchanges uh, like airplanes.live, ADSB exchange, flight radar 24, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, for a while, I've been excited about uh, what it would take to build a really small, uh, low-cost ADS-B receiver. Um, there are a bunch of small receivers that exist, as I said before, a couple hundred bucks, that kind of thing. Um, somewhere between, honestly, three to six hundred dollars if you're looking for a good one. Um, those are mostly based on FPGAs. And so what they'll do is they'll have a log power detector, and then uh, from that log power detector, they'll go into an FPGA, uh, usually through some kind of analog circuit, um, and then they'll, the FPGA will do all the preamble detection um, and the decoding. Uh, and that's what does the, the main you know, demodulation of the message, and then after that it'll get decoded uh, by a microcontroller that will look at the message contents and actually interpret what it says about where the aircraft is or who it's talking to. Um, when the RP2040 came out, uh, it's a little you know, microcontroller from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. They released it a couple years ago now. I think it was 2021. Um, I was excited about it because they added all these little teeny PIO blocks. Um, peripheral in out, I think is what it stands for. And these PIO blocks allow you to write really basic programs in a very limited assembly language called well, PIO, uh, PIO assembly. And uh, I was excited because I was like, what if you could use these to do the preamble detection decoding in ADSB? And it's taken a while. It's, I've been working on this for two years on the side and now for full time for a couple of months. And I'm excited to say it seems like it's working pretty well. Um, so this is what I have now. It's called the ADS-B 1090. I don't know if you can see it. Eh, there you go. The focus is great. So on, uh, I don't know which side it's going to be for you in the camera, but there's an RP2040 you can see. There's a USB-C connector. Um, and then inside that kind of gold square, is all of the RF components and the analog circuit. So uh, right where my finger is up here, you can see the RF input connector. Directly below that, there's a low noise amplifier. And then to the side of that, there's a uh, pads for where a soft filter goes, another low noise amplifier, and another soft filter. And then it goes into, on the bottom here, there's the uh, log power detector. And then from the log power detector goes into a couple of analog components and a comparator to slice it up to a digital signal. There's obviously some missing components on this board, um, but that's just because this is how I, I got these assembled overseas. Um, some of the more specific RF components are missing. I have to populate them afterwards. Um, once it goes into the RP2040, the PIO peripherals take care of the preamble detection of decode as I was talking about before. Um, and then the RP2040 just receives a bunch of these bytes in a FIFO um, and can use those to do the actual decoding of the position of the aircraft, of airspeed, other things like that. The RP2040 spends most of its time, uh, you know, well, 
doing decoding, but then the rest of the time is spent uh, maintaining an aircraft dictionary and then reporting the results of this aircraft dictionary and the decoded positions of the aircraft over serial. So over here on the pin headers, you can see there should be a TX and RX over there. So there's, there's a serial port exposed. And so if you wanted to put this into a project where you want to like build an Arduino project with a LED sign that you know, lights up when the plane is nearby or displays the plane's call sign or something, you can just connect to those UART pins and speak to it directly. Um, and there's all kinds, there's a couple of really simple protocols I've written, uh, but one of them is called CSB. And it pretty much just has comma separated values in ASCII. And you can find the, uh, how many aircraft it sees, the number of packets decoded, um, the call sign of the aircraft, altitude, heading, uh, airspeed, uh, even things like you know, dimensions of the aircraft, which is tr sometimes transmitted on the ground. Uh, that's provided through that protocol. Um, I'm really excited because we're about to do a beta. So this unit is, um, this is one of the early units I'm, I'm assembling by hand. Um, but we have a contract manufacturer that's currently quoting out uh, these units for a larger batch of assembly. Um, this board's pretty mature now. It's on revision F. Uh, but I think there's still probably a couple things to iron out. And really the big thing is uh, I'd like to get this to a large enough scale that you know the prices come down for everyone and we can kind of paste these into whatever projects we'd like to. And a big part of that is getting these into people's hands and getting real feedback from them about what they like, what they don't like, what we can change. And so um, I'm really excited to kick that process off in a couple of weeks here. Um, and if you're interested in contributing to the project, if you're uh, looking at firmware and adding features or getting one of these in your hands and doing a project with it, uh, I'd love to hear from you. So you can find out more about the ADSB 1090 on the website, uh, pantsforbirds.com. There is a sign up link there for the beta, as there's also a Discord server where we're going to keep in touch and uh, do the project together. Um, this board, I, I mentioned it's low cost a couple times, but I didn't actually say the price. Um, I'm targeting a uh, introductory price for the beta below $85, and I'm hoping to get it even lower uh, for mass production. But it really depends on what kind of volumes we have, what kind of applications people have for this. Um, this board has been designed to do a whole bunch of different things. Um, there's a whole bunch of pin headers on the side. Some of those are eventually going to be used for Ethernet support from, from the ESP32 on the back. Oh, I didn't even talk about that. I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, and there's also an input for a GPS and uh, additional outputs for, as I mentioned before, um, the UART connection to the RP2040 and even an analog pin that we can use to do things like check the charge level of battery if you're going to put this into a solar powered feeder station. Um, on the back side of the board, there's an ESP32 and that guy is used for network connectivity. So uh, you can send Wi-Fi packets out of this guy to uh, upload data about aircraft it's receiving onto the internet if you want to feed an online exchange. Uh, or you can create a, your own Wi-Fi network and uh, stream data to a uh, like electronic flight pack device. So for instance, if you have an iPad with four flight, you want to see 1090 megahertz uh, ADSB traffic data on there, you could get this to host its own network and stream your data that way. Of course, uh, there's still another one other band that aircraft transmit uh, position information on in the US. So that's 978 megahertz or UAT. Uh, I don't yet have that second band integrated into this board, but there is a connector to the internal spy bus, and I do have plans to develop that in the future. So uh, the more people that are interested in this project, the, the more fun it's going to be, and I'd love to hear from you guys. So uh, thanks so much for listening, and I'm excited to see what we build soon.